So you want to know how to get more mobility. Well, today we are going to take you out on the gym floor and demonstrate something really, really cool. Rad's going to give us a little bit of a demo on some of his old dynamic stretching routine from his wushu, wushu, is it? Kung, Kung Fu. Kung Fu days. Wushu, whatever you want to Kung call Fu it. Kung Fu days. Uh, we're in for a treat today, guys. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. We're back. Uh, and apologies for being a little bit late today, folks. We're just getting organized here. Uh, we are continuing on with our 10 top tools for flexibility development. And uh, we're pretty psyched about today. Uh, at least I am because I just have to talk you through it. Rad's going to be walking you through it. And um, look, this is an area that Rad has a lot of experience because he did practice martial arts kung fu for many, many years. He achieved quite a high level as an instructor and uh, it's something that he can kind of do blindfolded now, right? Yeah, well, I did it for a while, so it's uh, something that gets pretty well ingrained in your DNA when you do something for 15 years like I did. Yep. But uh, what I'm going to do today, because this is a part of our 10 um, you know, areas of developing mobility and flexibility in this series that we're doing, um, I'm going to take you guys out and I'm basically just going to start doing a dynamic mobility warm-up. And I am stone cold. I haven't done a single thing today. So you'll see when I start... I'm going to be not nearly as good as I am when I end. So I'll demonstrate, I'll do a, um, uh, an axe kick at the front and you can see how f high up I can get. And then I'll do this for, I don't know, five minutes or whatever we're gonna be out there for. And you can see at the end um, how flexible I am. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, before we do go out and start getting into the physical demo and the uh, execution side of things, I wanna talk a little bit about where dynamic stretching fits into the, uh, the puzzle because it's not really known as uh, the best way to increase flexibility. Uh, what, we more so use it as a way to improve performance within our workout, which then contributes to the big picture on, on the macro level. So bang for your buck, dynamic stretching, would I, I would say, is not like the best way to, to, to increase the length or mobility of a joint, mm. but it's certainly plays a big role in improving your ability to perform well and uh, and therefore it plays a big role in the big picture. And, and again, uh, what, like what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's really good for warming up and preparing you for what you're going to do because yeah. it takes the muscles through their full range of motion under speed, which is a replication of what you do in a workout. Yep. The reason why, well, this isn't the reason why, but one of the reasons why static stretching, which is the idea of just, you know, bending forward and touching my toes and holding a stretch for however long. The reason why that's so bad, well, sorry, again, one of the reasons why it's so bad for a warm up is it's nothing like what actually happens in a workout. In a workout, your muscles don't get lengthened and held at that lengthened position under control in a fixed plane of motion. It's nothing like that. Yep. In a workout, your muscles are constant, like, like so, so fast. I mean, imagine a sprinter, how quickly are these muscles contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing, contract, and they're and changing as well, like changing yep. the angle under which they contract, which means, you know, on one stride, maybe there's more adductor pulling, and on the other side, maybe there's more um, rectus femoris, um, uh, biceps femoris pulling. Yeah. Um, so the did I get that right? No. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, biceps I did. femoris yeah. on the outside. I got the a on the inside. I had a, had a brain fart then yeah. for a minute. Um, when I said rectus femoris, I was like, am I talking about the right muscle here? But anyway, so like it happens so, 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 so fast. Biceps femoris. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, for the hamstring. Yeah. 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 Um, sorry, <laughs> I haven't had any coffee over here. I'm on a, I'm on a fast at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, dynamic stretching is really good for that because yep. it takes your joints through those ranges of motion under speed um, in a way that replicates um, more what goes on in, athletic uh, performance. in a workout. Yeah. I'd say athletic or sporting performance. Now, yeah. the, dynamic stretching and static stretching are literally polar opposites and that's probably something that we can lead off with it's here. dark, Richie. Is it, is it dark yeah, or it is, is it just it, me? It is quite dark. Okay. Um, I'm just... Lights turned off. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Rad's, Rad's light. Didn't it's all good. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's go. Let's keep going. Uh, and um, it's, uh, you know, static stretching, although it makes you feel good, like it does, you, you, you will feel quite good. 
after doing static stretching and you may feel like the muscle is now working optimally, it certainly compromises strength and, uh, and it can really um, uh, expose you to more risk of injury and that's why we don't suggest doing static stretching before a workout. Uh, we usually wait till we're warmed up and also, you know, static stretching, you'll notice a massive difference. Like we've done this, we've experimented with stretching, like cold stretching and hot stretching to the degree where Rad like almost won't stretch unless he's wearing like full get up, like trackies. We even wear skins underneath our trackies when we're doing lower body stretching to help warm the body up, to get you at that optimal level so that you can really, really um, uh, improve mobility and flexibility, you know, mm. right? Yeah, well, even in winter, I wear so much clothes that I sweat in winter. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, you just it's counterproductive yeah. and you need to be able to warm your body up and stay warm when, yeah. you're, uh, when you're doing mobility training. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I, I assume, mm. and I've never done Bikram yoga before, but I assume that that's one of the reasons why they heat the room up so much. Uh, I think they do it just because they're pricks, man. They're fucking <laughs> I've never done big <laughs> yoga before. I know. Uh, I'm not saying that because I have anything against yoga. I'm saying that because I fucking hated Bikram yoga when yeah, really? I did it. Oh man, it's it was intense. Yeah, like torture. I've heard I, it's I intense. Think, I think they're just being mean to you. But anyway. All right. Well, look. Let's uh, let's not delay. It. Let's get out onto yeah, the gym floor. It. We'll get let, let let Richie get ready. He's ready to go. Uh, all right, so I'm mic'd up, so I'm just going to try and talk you guys through what Rad's doing here. And uh, <laughs> my son is, uh, is here. This is, tell him this is an example of dynamic flexibility for the shoulders. So Rad's just saying this is a, an example of dynamic flexibility for the shoulders because he's taking his shoulders through a full range of movement under force. He's, he, he's got momentum, he's got inertia. And that's sort of forcing the joint through full range of movement. So, this will say this will be our test, so you can have a look at how far. So he, he's involved. just he, they they will be able to hear you. So he's just testing his range of movement now in that in that hamstring. Right. So now you're actually performing the warm up. Yep. Yep. Now after a couple of reps, I can feel my body's already warming up. He's warming up and he can push harder and harder each time. Now dynamic stretching, a lot of people are concerned that it's dangerous because uh, you know, you're, you're working at speed, you're working at velocity. Now what Rad's doing here, obviously he's quite um, flexible and mobile and he has practiced this warm up quite a lot, but dynamic stretching shouldn't be dangerous. You should be doing, you should always be working to your limitations. What Rad's limitations are are gonna far exceed a, a lot of people watching the show, but um, you know, when you do hip swings and things like that, you work to your range of movement. You will have noticed when Rad was doing those kicks that he's not excessively moving his, the rest of his body. He's trying to keep the rest of his body fairly still uh, and just working the hip. So now he's opening up the hip flexors and uh, before he was opening up, the majority was the hamstring tendons that he was stretching and also a bit of glute, a little bit of lower back. Well, that second one I was doing was the whole hip capsule. Oh, the, 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 the um, external rotate, yeah. abduction, yep, yep. Yeah. Because it's not, I don't think you can see it. I'm starting to get out of breath now. This is a real warm up. It's not just about kicking up this way and kicking up this way and we do, I also do ones to the side like this for the adductors, but it's about taking your joint through a range of motion, like a circular range of motion as well. And same with the shoulders by doing this here. You can also do dynamic mobility like this with the shoulders, okay? You can do, you can do it even you know, with the spine. It's actually, it's not really probably a good example with the spine. And we even do like, you know, things like where you come into a lunge here and then, you know, so open up the shoulders. This. So this is all dynamic mobility. If you're just 
if I'm swinging my shoulder like this, this is really warming it up, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, the do, list goes on. Um, in, in, do the duck walk, and I also want to demonstrate a dynamic calf stretch okay. to the ostrich walk. So, Rad, we call this the duck walk, and this is a really, really great dynamic stretch for squatting. Uh, you can even load. You can even do loaded. Like I do loaded duck walk with a barbell on my back, but you obviously have to have a decent, he uh, healthy knee. This is the um, ostrich walk, which is a specific hamstring dynamic mobility or flexibility drill, dynamic stretch. And we do a lot of ostrich walks. Anyone who's doing our foundation movement system program online will recognize this one from our warm ups. Do it, just demonstrate a leaning uh, uh, dynamic calf stretch. This is a really good one for runners. So rather than just holding a, a static stretch in the calf, Rad's going to rotate his hips leaning forward. So he's getting the gastrocnemius through here and he's taking it through as much of a range of movement as it can. Because if you think about the logic of running, your, your run is not always going to be perfectly straight. Your, your stride, you might be on an angle, you might be changing directions, and you need to take the ankle and the, uh, uh, the calf through its full range of movement. So dynamic stretching in the calf is a really, really great way to warm up before you go for a run, as opposed to just holding a stretch, which of course is going to reduce the elasticity of the tendons <coughs> and make them more susceptible to injury. Uh, is there anything else that we wanted to do today? Well, the only, the, the, the I mean, there's, there's heaps, there's so many things, but it's all, it's just like doing different Kung Fu type movements. Yeah, so, all right. Um, as far as the, the stretching goes, those are the main ones that I do. I mean, people do, um, I mean, honestly, like even just doing this, this is dynamic mobility. When you see runners do this, yep. and this. Yep, stretching the quads, you know, stretching, stretching the hip the flexors. Here, hamstrings, glutes here, that's, that's dynamic mobility. Yep. You know? And when people do this kind of thing, you see, I've seen martial artists do this. Yep. You know, in, in movies and stuff, that's, that's a dynamic mobility for the hip. I'm just moving along and then taking the hip through its full range of motion in a dynamic way. Yep. Yeah. That okay. would be something you do before you do that one. Yep. The four legs thing, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah. So they're all like there's so many examples. Yeah. And it's really um, it's really up to uh, you know your. Um, let's, knowledge let's, and what it is you can do. Let's jump in now because I want to talk a little bit about <coughs> the difference between our mobility warm-up and what we've just shown there. Uh, because there will be some people in the FMS online watching, thinking um, what's optimal, what's the better way to do it. And uh, for us really, it, you, you get to a point where you're trying to make every, you're maximizing time. Now where are lucky that we have equipment in the gym. So we can do uh, mobility drills, loaded mobility drills, things like that, you know. So rather than just swinging our arms around in the air, we can do the band resisted uh, shoulder routine and we can do um, uh, passive and active hanging and shoulder circles, uh, under load, things like that. Well, there's there's a couple of things to say about that because um, there's what's the best way to do things and then there's what's the best way to do things when you're looking at the entire picture. Because yep. if someone said to me, what's the best way to warm up your hips? Um, I would, uh, you know, for me, what I just demonstrated there, that's some of the best ways to do it. But it, you have to really know what you're doing. Like I've taught people Kung Fu for six months or a year and they still couldn't do that stuff that well. Yeah. It's, it, it takes an understanding of how to brace your body and how to keep your foot on the ground and how to try to isolate the movement as much as you can to the hip capsule when you're doing it. That took me a lot of time to be able to learn. So it's not um, a great way, in my opinion, to be teaching someone if you don't know that they're going to be staying with you for f three years or something like that to be able to really learn it and absorb it. So it's very hard to teach beginners when they come to a gym or into a routine. It makes people feel like they're really useless when they do it and that we've learned doesn't really work very well. Yep. Um, and then the other thing is that what, you know, what we've learned is that 
you want your warm up to try to be less than 12 minutes like more than 12 minutes in a warm up is that like that you're not in a work you don't go to the gym to warm up you go to the you warm up so that you can work out yep. so you want your warm up to be done quickly and you want your warm up to be done in a way where the end goal is to make you fully prepared for your workout so that your first set is the best set not this idea of warming up but then you have to do two or three sets before you do your peak it shouldn't yep. like a warm-up you should be ready at the end of your warm-up to do your, your first max set yep. um and it shouldn't fatigue you at all there yep. should be zero fatigue at the end of the warm-up you shouldn't feel like you need to take a break after your warm-up before you do your first set uh and for that reason we've chosen the exercises that we do in the fms very very carefully yeah because that stuff that i did just there that does fatigue you Yep. It does, like I couldn't do that and then go straight into a set of squatting. No way. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd have to take a break for a few minutes, catch my breath, um, you know, let all the energy reserves build up again. Yep. And uh, and then I could do it. But does it warm my hips up well? Fuck, like some of the best thing that I could ever do. Yeah, but yeah, you've yeah. got you to weigh up what that trade-off is. And we've, for those of you out there that are watching, like we've tested this for five years. And, and we haven't tested it for five years. So we've we've researched it for 15 years for our, or our own training and then we've tested all these things that we've learned have had like we did warm-ups like this five years ago and yeah. then we did warm-ups differently four years ago and then differently three years ago and it keeps evolving and who knows maybe in a year's time we'll change it again but right now with all the evolutions we've gone through I believe with my hand on my heart that what we're doing is the best warm-up that you can do for the average person yeah for the average person if you're elite and you know more than what we know or you know more than the average person then there'll be a different warm-up that's good for you but for the average person that comes to us yeah that's yeah, so that's absolutely. a long answer for what you were saying no no, no it's it's good i mean the, the, the warm-up is very very important and a lot of people get it really wrong and we did for a long time too mm -hmm. you know where we went down the path of spending at, like, for, we used to warm up for 45 minutes mm -hmm. you know yeah. Uh, and the, the reality is, is that you want to get into the workout, you set it yourself as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. Yeah, but that's for the FMS as well. Like I, now that I'm, I've just said all that, if you were a tennis player or a runner, then that stuff would be absolutely golden for yeah. you gold for you because you want to take your joints through an explosive range of motion as part of your warm up yep. to prepare them for the workout. Yeah. Um, and that's a you, you definitely do not want to just do some stretching and, you know, pull your leg back and move your neck around and then get on the tennis court and start running around hitting balls. You'll, yeah, that's yeah. that's where you'll do an injury. You want some serious dynamic warm ups that prepare you for explosive lateral movement and jumping and arm swinging and everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's uh, pretty much covered it, guys. Um, dynamic stretching is essentially the opposite to static stretching. We're going to go into static stretching soon, and um, hopefully you've taken a little bit away from that. Yeah. We'll see you all tomorrow. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.